Instagram reveal. Bum ba da da. This is island style fish tacos. Yeah, we'll barbecue them. Gonna treat them like slimy mackerel. Alrighty guys, we are day four. Welcome back to the Wet Mammal Channel. We are day four on the island survival and check. Today is gonna be a good day, I reckon. Oh, good morning, Mon. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How'd you sleep? Way better because I hid inside my towel poncho. She hid inside the towel poncho. So I was way warmer and the mosquitoes couldn't get me. Well, that's good. Yep, that's good. You excited for some cocoa? Yeah. Oh. Excited for some uh, coconut and pawpaw breakfast, and then we're gonna go diving, of course, and try and get some fish or a lobster or an octopus, just something for dinner. And then we're gonna cook up feed and uh, yeah, basically do it all again. Day four in tropical paradise, deserted island. Let's go. So definitely one of my favourite things about this island is that although it's rained heaps and heaps and heaps last night it doesn't seem to have affected the viz in the shallows It might get more rain, who knows, but yeah, as soon as we go out to that like 5 metre mark um, it just starts to get really really hazy and that's a pain but let's see if we can get some fish this morning So we start the day with the coconut Inside the hole, one, two, third and final, three, and pop. Drinking coconut, that's how we start the morning here on the island. <sighs> Delicious. So it's not quite the sunny start that we're used to on the island. Mum's just getting up and then we're going to have a dive in cloudy conditions. Who knows, we might cop some rain in a bit. We'll never know. But yeah, this is it. Delicious. Coconut. So after the uh, coconut comes the pawpaw. I don't think I've ever done it with a fillet and knife before, but geez, that's smooth. Grand reveal, bump da da Beautiful. So we'll just scoop out the seeds and uh, then eat for our second course of breakfast. We've had coconuts, we drank the coconuts, we ate the coconuts, now we're gonna eat the pawpaw. We've got the uh, pawpaw, we're just gonna de-seed it basically. These seeds don't taste particularly nice, so. They're quite tart. And I usually quite like like sour and tart things, but yeah, not with the pawpaw seed. So there we've got our two pawpaws, our adaptive ape titanium cutlery or spoon, and yeah, breakfast is on. It really doesn't get to be a more natural breakfast than this. Fruit and coconut, both from this island, coconut water, drank for hydration. This is what it's about. I can't explain how good this is. It's so sweet and yummy. If you've had pawpaw before, you've never had pawpaw like this, I promise you. This is absolutely delicious. You need to come to the islands to experience the real thing. 
All right, so we're doing pretty good in terms of not eating like the food that we brought with us, which is great. But today we're gonna get stuck into dun -dun -dun -dun, soft dried pineapple because there's no pineapples on this island, so we've we've brought our own. It's what it is. I cannot wait. My body is like seriously craving almost like artificial sugars. We've been on nothing but like fresh, beautiful, organic stuff. It's nice to have a bit of processed stuff, I guess. Who knows? How good is it? Are you already eating one? Mm -mm. What are you eating? My nut bar. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, it tastes like pineapple. It does. It tastes good. And you guessed it, it's time for another coconut. All right, uh, let's go. Now, get a little triangle. Smells good, triangle. Mm. This one's surprisingly warm. All right, so this is just to indicate how well we've done. We've made it to day five and we've only just used the first drum. So it's 20 liters, but it was filled right up to the brim. So it's most likely about 22 liters something like that and that's lasted us five days so that's like two liters of water each per day or like roughly four liters a day um that's not bad that's like considering we're drinking probably a liter liter and a half of coconut water a day so we're getting like three and a half liters in us um of liquids so that's that's actually like pretty pretty good I think it hasn't been too hot which has been another thing which has like saved us for water um, and we've been on water rations just because we weren't sure how much we were going to use so yeah you should on an island survival you really want to be drinking like three to five I mean if you can get five if you've got access to five liters of water a day on an island survival when it's hot and you're just being blasted by salt wind all day and it's just dehydrating you quicker than it normally would um that's that's pretty good and yeah so three liters it means that for the rest of the trip we can have three uh, three liters a day of water no dramas and um we're gonna be sweet so yay water rations we can have showers woohoo moni you looking forward to a proper shower yeah like just water flowing over you as opposed to like quick rub and scrub yeah be nice I can wash the bands on the spear gun. They're gonna need changing after this trip. Um, and we've definitely got a little bit of rust just up here. Forming up right on the tip. That obviously comes into contact with a bit of reef and stuff like that and scratches off whatever coating stops it from rusting. But uh, yeah, not bad. All gear will get a full blown maintenance check. Um, post this trip, I need to wash down all the hammocks and everything. Um, and pack it up properly so it doesn't smell of smoke for the next trip and it just helps prolong the longevity of all of the equipment. So we finally make our way back into the water and I am absolutely desperate to get onto a lobster. So we spend a fair amount of time on the way out to the reef looking for lobsters we stumble across this awesome stingray who's just beautiful and pretty playful until he started to raise his tail which indicates that he doesn't want us to hang around anymore as you can see just exploring the reef we do come across one small baby cray but unfortunately he's way too small so we'll leave him be and hopefully we find one of his bigger brothers 
We did plenty of searching for these crays. It's really difficult to try and find crays in, in new ground, especially if you're not sure if they do exist there or if you're finding juvenile crays, that's usually a good sign that there might be some bigger ones. Maybe they're a bit deeper or yeah, just in different spots. Some cool baby bluefin trevally. There's a juvenile groper. He didn't want to be filmed. But after some serious searching on the cray front, we decided to go for some fish. I have a nice little dive down to the top of this reef and I can see that there's moo around and Japanese large eyed brim and all kinds of other reef species. Now the moo's too small in my opinion to take so I leave him be and I'm just trying to coax in something that's a little bit bigger. A moo around 45-50 centimeters would have been nice but I couldn't see anything. There was that coral trout, but I decided to just hold off for the time being, just to see if anything else was going to come in. You can see there's quite a nice size wrasse out the front, but do I want to be eating wrasse on a day like today? Not particularly. I give another little scratch on the dead coral, and I can see that the coral trout's appeared, and I think that's what I'm gonna go for. I swim over to him and I'm still keeping my eyes open. I can see that midnight snapper, but he's a bit small and go for the coral trout. I'm not sure what happened here guys, but yeah, really not great shooting from me. Um, yeah, I was kicking myself after that shot because of, I'd hit him straight through the gut. So I released the reel off and just headed up to the surface to get some air. Once I'm at the surface, I have a breathe up and when it's safe to do so, I dive back down to retrieve the coral trout. Now I'm honestly so surprised that there's no sharks around here and this fish hasn't been taxed. Um, Fiji is renowned for pesky taxing sharks. I do my best to avoid any damage to the coral when I'm freeing this fish, but I need to also bear in mind that I've got him right on a gut shot and he could tear. As I retrieve the fish, I try and keep as much tension off the line as possible while still dragging this fish up. If he decided to have a little run, I would definitely loosen off my grip on the line and let him take some line just to avoid that tear. So I get the fish up to the surface and it's quite clear he's pretty lifeless. So I think I must have hit a pretty important organ or something like that. And yeah, he's out of action, but beautiful colors on this coral trout. As always, I'm not tired of eating these guys just yet, but look at the red on him. After this, I go back to looking for some crays. Mon's assisting, getting in every nook cranny possible, um, but we just can't find legal crays, which is quite frustrating. And anyways, we've got a coral trout. It's not the end of the world, but absolutely amazing coral structures on this reef. Now this is quite frustrating. Here's a beautiful leopard shark and annoyingly i think it's called a zebra shark in some countries as well but it looks like a leopard um annoyingly my camera was facing down but that was the coolest thing diving down and it taken off i'm sorry that it wasn't on camera guys it was a beautiful experience stumbled across this lionfish whilst looking for crays and they're native to fiji so we don't need to go too hard on hunting them all right guys, so we've just got back from our morning dive and lunch is secured. We've got ourselves dun -dun -dun. down here. We have the poor, poor princess, dive them on. And then there's our beautiful coral trout. It's about time that we clean and cook this coral trout. I've made this fire and I'm actually gonna cheat with the fire. And let me tell you why. 
it's rained non-stop all the sand and everything is so wet and some of the timber is wet so i'm going to show you what to do in a situation like this if you've got any kind of deodorant or for me it's this stuff this is like quick light so it's a very very handy tool to have especially when it's been wet i don't use it all the time and like i try and avoid using it and try going for the flint and steel just feels cooler looks cooler and yeah it just feels a bit more rugged and natural but times like this require a lighter so i'm gonna be honest with you guys i'm not gonna try and make out that i'm getting fires going in the pissing wet because it's not happening so what do we do we just take some of this i've got leaves under there then heaps of small bits of timber and then timber so we just give a little spray like that just to get the leaves going there we go fingers crossed that's enough to get the job done we're getting there the leaves are fully catching fire now we're getting quite a lot of smoke getting plenty of oxygen that's good Get some more of that wind direction come on come on girl get going hey okay we're alight happy days for a moment there i didn't think we were going to get going it's rained like most of the time that we were in the water and yeah all of last night so i'm stoked we have fire now my job's just going to be basically keeping this fire going the rest of the day i don't want to have to try and do that again tonight so yeah we'll be burning fire from now on but that's a good fire so yes bit of a cheat thank you mr aeroguard but don't usually do it this way but had to in these conditions it's just so wet and fingers crossed we don't get any rain between now and dinner time otherwise it'll be quite a sad affair but yeah cool fire 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 let's cook some trout <gasps> Look at all that delicious meat. Oh, ho, ho. beautiful. Right, it's getting a bit sloppy up the top. Cut that out. Beautiful, lovely fillet. One and two. In the frame we will keep but we might let the ants have a go at it and i'll use this for burley for something else next off comes the skin and i've got a little trick for the skin i'm going to share with you so you might have just seen that i've just washed this in salt water no you didn't see because i didn't set the camera with me but i did that's why it's all like super wet all right now there's a trick and there's a reason for doing this one i screwed up i got sand on my fillets and i'm getting sand everywhere there's so much sand who would have thought hey i've come all the way to a remote beach in the middle of fiji and there's bloody sand everywhere yeah, this is why why we should stay in the cities right bloody sand a few of you might be thinking jesus this guy's a bit loose with the old fillet and knife believe it or not i've never ever managed to cut myself with a decent fillet and knife i have had a fillet and knife snap and stab me in my thumb but i've never managed to actually like cut myself with a fillet knife but i have done it with a bread knife which is hilarious okay so then we're going to come in here Oh, 
Oh, that's better skin. And we'll turn it over on its back just to see. Oh, result. Get in. So then we're going to chuck in a whole heap of butter. This is island style fish tacos. We've got corn chips, a bit of tasty cheese flavor, and that's as much cheese as we're gonna get. Then we've got our lovely coral trout and got a jalapeno on there. Yeah. Any hot sauce? So this is like the most budget <laughs> taco any out there. Mini taco. Mini taco. If any Mexicans are watching and you're offended, I'm sorry, but this is this is all we've got. The cold trout is delicious and crispy though. Okay, let's try the mini taco. Mmm. Let's go. Tastes like a taco? Tastes like a taco. Uh, the jalapenos really just give it a little bit of extra something. So you're out here on the islands, you don't really have much, but having these low elements just make all the difference. I think they do. Yeah. They help. I've actually managed to find a corn chip that's just like a taco. And then heaps and heaps and heaps of cheese. Yeah, I love it. It's only a medium heat, but it's mm. got like a real smoky flavor. It's lovely. Right, here we go. Coral trout tacos. Mm hmm. Oh. Mm. I think the taste of the corn chip enhanced the taco. That's good. That's good have some more. So we're gonna have this um, basically for the rest of the afternoon and then we're gonna get in the water and catch something and cook it up for dinner. Which reminds me I need to check that fire, make sure that fire doesn't go out and hopefully no more rain and hey look I put the lid on once more. You know what? I might go for like a taco sandwich kind of thing. Oh yeah, like a taco burger. Yeah. As if we haven't bastardized Mexican culture, South and Central American culture enough. We're now making taco burgers. <laughs> Sorry guys. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's basically Mexico. <laughs> I'm gonna stop there, I'll get banned from YouTube. See ya. That's a big bit of timber. It's gonna burn nicely. Oh yeah. All right, I've been chopping through this for a while. Hopefully I can just kind of drop it. And it's gonna crack. Hey! Good stuff. Right, 
I've got decent timber on the fire so I can quickly hop in the water and go for another dive. Mon hasn't joined me on this one, she's still trying to dry off from the last dive and a spell of rain that we had. Come across this cool porcupine fish, he doesn't really want to be seen but really cool to see. I'm basically cruising down the far left hand side of the reef, come across this cool little white tip, he hangs around, gets a bit curious, but ultimately decides to mind his own, which is good for me and good for him. I do have this huge score of Salala, largemouth mackerel or Indian mackerel, come into sight and I just think, you know what, I'd probably take more than one of those and then that would be a good meal for me and Mon. So, line up shot, bang. Lights out on the first one, and I actually tail shot a second one, which I didn't mean to do. I head to the surface, and decide, you know what? I'm gonna bang another one straight on the same clip. So, I quickly record, or I keep, so I keep the recording going. I've sped this clip up, it took me a minute 20 to load the gun fully, and just for you don't need to sit through that. I dive down again, line up another fish, and lights out again. We'll go two fish in a row, lights out. I actually hit this one through the back of him and then the spear came out the other side of his head, but he was lights out. Unfortunately his body just got away. So, really struggled to find anything of interest out there. And then last minute, a school of Salala came by and yeah, thank God they did. Um, large mouth Indian mackerel for those outside of Fiji. And uh, yeah, we'll barbecue them. Gonna treat them like slimy mackerel. Cook them up on their barbecue with some butter stuffed inside them and a bit of salt and Bob's your uncle. All right, so we're gonna try and we don't have any kinds of foil or anything like that so we're basically just going to try and put some butter on the inside of the stomach or the inside cavity of the salala or the Indian mackerel and to prevent the butter from sliding out we're going to try and do it upside down so we're going to make use of this which is literally just old dead root and it's super flexible and it makes excellent excellent twine so we'll just tie that around something like this and we'll seal the deal with a little knot. So hopefully they can just go upside down like this over the fire with butter on the insides and uh, they'll cook. That's the plan anyways. All right, and for the marinade that's gonna go on the inside of the gut cavity, we're gonna use some fresh garlic with some freshly cracked black pepper, salt, and we'll go some parsley. No, we're not doing any of that because we don't have any of those ingredients. So we're just gonna use butter like this, and then we're just going to chuck some of this seasoning onto it. And that's gonna be it. <laughs> So we'll mix that all together. Yummy, 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 mix, mix, mix. Dragon, you could swing round the other. Cook her up. Oh, she's about done. Cooked up quite nicely. Right. Moment of truth that they don't just snap off. There we go, there's our fish. Come over. Down they go. Oh, they're crispy. They're crispy and crunchy. One, two. So the heads have obviously crisped up a little bit more from the tails, but we've ensured that the tail sections are cooked right through. But just look at this meat underneath. Oh, that is beautiful. The butter's done its job. And we're gonna have to try some right now. Go straight in on the top section of meat. See how that is. Beautifully cooked.
pretty tasty. Definitely got a lot of that smoky flavor going on. It tastes like not quite smoked mackerel, but it definitely tastes like mackerel with a smoky feeling. So brilliant. We're just gonna eat this up and uh, get into it. Happy days.